Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've wanted to do this video for a while since I started my channel because in all honesty, it's something that I wish I had when I was in the depths of my PCOS. I feel like there wasn't a lot of YouTube videos saying how to help your PCOS and to take actual steps on how to start feeling better. I wanted to provide you with steps and things that I did where I naturally healed my PCOS symptoms and ended up losing weight when all the odds were against me with my PCOS. So to give some background, I was diagnosed with PCOS back in October of 2019 and the root cause is a little bit unknown. I know there could be a lot of factors. My mom had PCOS when she was my age. I was also just coming off a birth control pill that I had been on for many many years and my body was probably freaking out i was looking to switch to a different method but that's when everything started going a little crazy in my body to kind of top everything off it is also when i had just lost over 50 pounds my body was starting to have trouble adapting to that big of a change to kind of give some insight my main symptoms that i started noticing right away were gut issues my digestion started to become horrible and certain foods were making me feel really bloated nauseous etc i was gaining weight for no reason i was not in a calorie surplus and i had gained with my whole pcos experience probably around 10, 15 pounds just from hormonal issues. The third thing that I was really noticing was appearance wise. I was struggling with really, really bad hormonal acne. It got really bad at one point, And also I was having abnormal hair growth all over my body. Obviously I'm not a professional. I'm not a doctor. I just wanted to share what works for me. If you already know you have PCOS and you haven't figured out a way to heal it and to feel better, keep on watching. So starting out with everything, I know going to the doctor can seem so so, so frustrating i went to three or four different doctors that all told me the same thing and they were like oh yeah your testosterone levels are a bit high your estrogen levels are a bit low but you know everything else looks great you have no ovarian cysts i would gotten that ultrasound done they were just like you're okay because you're healthy on other blood tests Every single doctor I went to gave me the advice to try out different birth control pills until I found something that worked for me to balance out my hormones. Knowing how much birth control messed up my body in the first place and knowing that coming off a birth control pill after being on it for multiple years could have been the root cause of all of this in the first place, I pretty much had made the conscious decision that I did not want to go on a birth control pill just because I feel like that was just covering up the cause and just not actually healing anything. So after seeing multiple doctors, I had made the conscious decision that I wanted to heal my PCOS, get my period back, and lose weight with PCOS very naturally. So I knew that this was going to be a big journey to take. So I have a list here of tangible steps that I took for each category. The first thing that I knew I needed to fix with having PCOS was getting my period back. When I had lost my period due to weight loss right away, I didn't really think anything of it. I just kind of knew that it was my body adjusting. I assumed that it was going to come back and it had been it had been 11 months at that point and I had no period and no even signs of really PMSing or that I was even going through this cycle and I wasn't even on birth control and it eventually started really freaking me out. So step one before I fixed anything else was getting my period back. Number one was lowering my stress levels, lowering my cortisol and chilling out my body <laughs> because when I was in the depths of my PCOS, I was a senior in college, I was very high stress, I had a full-time job, I was a full-time time student and I just never stopped. My cortisol levels were probably so, so, so high. I was also working out like crazy. I was really into Orange Theory classes. I was in F45 classes. I really liked that higher intense cardio and after doing more research, I learned that that may not be the best thing to be doing when you have PCOS. Again, 
grain of salt because everyone's experiences are so different but i took the initiative to try and cut out high intensity exercise to see what it would do to my body and my stress levels i cut down from doing these crazy classes to only doing light weight training and only training around three days a week. Lowering the days over the week that I was working out really did help. My body felt more rejuvenated, I felt more rested, and overall my stress levels became a lot better. If you have PCOS and you're trying to lose weight with very high intensity exercise, I would recommend that you at least try going a little lower intensity for a few weeks and see what it does. Another step to getting my period back also kind of goes into kind of the diet, which I'll talk about later but adding more healthy fats to my diet when i was first losing weight and i didn't know as much about nutrition i had assumed that too many fats into your diet was just not good for you adding healthy fats into your diet especially when you're a woman is so beneficial it can give your mind a lot more clarity it can help your digestion and i just started adding in more fats i started using more olive oil more avocado i can't say this last thing brought my period back but i started taking this supplement when i wanted to get my period back and i still take it today and ever since my period came back it has been very normal and i think it is from this supplement this supplement is called called Myo and D Cairo Anostol. This guy is pretty much for ovarian health, woman health. It also helps with insulin levels, which I think could have been causing me to gain unnecessary weight, especially in the beginning. So I take four of these a day and I have for the past year and a half and I will never go back. I think each, each of these bottles from Amazon is only like $20 and it'll last you over a month and it really is not a bad investment for I think what it has done to my body. After I got my period back, I was still dealing with a lot of PCOS symptoms. I was very happy that I got it back. I did feel like I was at least functioning and I knew I was on the right track. But the second thing that I really wanted to address because I'd been dealing with it for so long was gut and digestion issues. Before I lost weight, I didn't have any dietary restrictions. I really didn't have any intolerances. I could pretty much eat whatever I wanted and at least like my stomach would be fine. Towards the end of my weight loss, I started realizing that I was really sensitive to dairy, even a little bit of dairy, and I just kind of brushed that off because that also runs in my family and I was just like, I'm getting older, this happens. Even when I was cutting out dairy, I was still feeling so horrible and so bloated. I would have a day where I'd eat so healthy, I was on my A game, and I would wake up looking six months pregnant. Like, it was so not good. My bloating was horrible, and the doctor had no advice for me with that. So I ended up seeing a nutritionist, which was also a really awesome investment into myself. It was a journey. We pretty much had to go through everything that I was eating at that point. So I had to start tracking. If I ate certain things, I would have to make sure I would monitor how it would make me feel. And just going through that process with somebody else though and having somebody cheer you on really did help me stay motivated and really want to fix my digestion. You will normally hear with PCOS to cut out both gluten and dairy and in my personal experience, I cut out all gluten and most dairy. I've seen that that is what makes me feel best, but obviously you need to do what's best for you because in the beginning when I heard gluten and dairy free, it was like cold turkey, like I wasn't eating. I wasn't eating any gluten, I wasn't eating any dairy. You also see people post about with PCOS to go keto and cut out all carbs. And when I first started doing this new diet to try and heal my PCOS, I was cutting out all gluten, all dairy, and I was at a very low carb intake. And in reality, that caused a little more harm than good in the beginning because I love carbs and I pretty much was really restricting myself and cutting them out of my diet. So I kind of got myself in check and started experimenting with my carb intake and actually realized that I can still be eating around 150 grams of carbs a day, which is pretty substantial. It really does depend on the person though. Just because somebody else has an amazing experience with keto doesn't mean that you will. So my advice would be to monitor your carb intake, but don't let that be your end all be all and take the leap of a journey of realizing that it may take a while, but for you to realize your carb intake and what makes your body feel good, 
but it will be worth it in the end. Add in micronutrients wherever you can when it comes to things so little, things like chia seeds, cinnamon, fruit, veggies, like add them in to anything that you can because micronutrients and giving your body that nutrients that it needs really will help. Also not cutting out, but monitoring how much processed foods you eat. I've seen so much of my inflammation go down just from eating a more whole and nutritious diet. And because I'm still in the process of totally healing my PCOS symptoms, my goal is to not be gluten and dairy free forever. I am not celiac. I just realized that I developed a very bad gluten intolerance and I am hoping one day when my hormones level themselves out and I'm feeling a lot better that I can start slowly adding gluten back into my diet. So that is the end goal and just know that that is that is possible. When it comes to things appearance wise, things can be really hard. When I realized that I was having some abnormal hair growth, some more growth on my chin, some abnormal hair growth on my chest, and dealing with a lot of hormonal acne, it really, really crushed my self-confidence. <laughs> when your self-confidence is crushed, it can also raise your stress levels when you're not liking how you look in the mirror. The biggest tip I have appearance wise is to invest in yourself. And I know that sounds so broad and scary. Confidence levels to me are very important. And if I wanted to reduce my stress levels and feel better and be have a good mindset to heal my PCOS, I knew I needed to invest in myself. I was doing research on what are the best ways to get rid of hormonal acne, adult acne. Also from the last couple years of my life, I developed really bad scarring on my cheeks, on my chin, because I am bad about not touching my acne. Something that was coming up a lot was called microneedling and it is pretty much, you go to an esthetician and they stick a bunch of needles into your skin and it produces collagen and pretty much allows a new barrier of skin to come to the surface. So getting rid of scarring, of acne, and it can really almost like start over the process. So I found an amazing esthetician that does microneedling and has had some amazing results with some of her clients. So I've had three microneedling sessions and I'm hoping by the time I have five or six microneedling sessions, a lot of my scarring will be gone. I am very happy though with how my skin looks now and I will put a picture on the screen of literally what my chin and my face looked like for months. <laughs> when it comes to skincare, I definitely have learned that less is more. So find a good oil-free moisturizer, a good oil-free acne wash, and really just stick to those two products. The more you lather on, the more you introduce to your hormones, the more you introduce to your skin, the more it can freak out. So less really is more of taking care of hormonal acne. The overall message I do want to give in this video is to not give up on yourself and do not take the first option. When I was in a very bad space in my PCOS, I really do wish that there was a video out there or a doctor out there being like, believe in yourself. Like, you got this. You can heal your body naturally. You can lose weight. You can heal your PCOS symptoms and go on to live a healthy life and not worry about getting pregnant and be feel normal again, honestly. I had so many doctors tell me that this could be a forever thing and I could have trouble having kids in the future. And with the way that I have taken care of my body and taken these steps to help my hormones, help my period health, help my gut issues, clear my skin and just like totally believe in myself and totally lower my stress levels has changed my life valuing how i'm feeling on the inside and not ignoring that was step number one for me that if i was going too fast if life was getting too crazy that i needed to slow down and work on myself so overall if you if you are feeling down or stuck about healing your pcos just don't give up because something out there i promise will work. So those were my quick tips on how to heal PCOS naturally and I really do hope that if you are dealing with the same thing that I have that this even helped just one person. If you guys want more kind of PCOS videos, if you want more hormone videos, or you just want to learn more about my journey, or if you guys have questions, please leave a comment down below. Please don't get to subscribe and like this video and I will see you guys in my next one.
बाय